Welcome back to clear water and sunshine. I'm in the middle of Texas, baby, on Lake Travis, one of the clearest bodies of water in the state. And we're gonna do a little bit of clear water dangling for you here today. So, uh, there is no fishing boat trailers in the parking lot. That is indicating that the fishing's probably not the best out here. There is some huge bass in here. There's just not a large number of them. There are a high number of small bass in here, including our state fish, which is the Guadalupe bass. I haven't caught one of those in a long time. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think we're gonna be doing mostly finesse tactics. Always good to brush up on that finesse stuff. And you know, there's something about going to a clear water lake and the hot, the, you know, heat of summertime, jumping in the lake. I don't know, it just feels like you're at a swimming pool. It's, it's good times. It's a little bit better than being in the swamp around a bunch of grass and alligators and stumps. I, I, that's just me, I don't know. I like that more than spring. Fire up the Merc. Let's get to cranking on them. Throwing on a rattling Ned, just because I think it's it's going to be a one of those things that'll catch fish in this clear water. We're talking, goodness, keep that five foot there, five foot down. I can see that Ned there. It's probably, oh, it's probably more like six, seven foot. I didn't have the glare right there. So I've got the boat sitting in 53 feet of water. And I'm just fishing a little bluff type area that has a creek channel swing next to it. I think a good question for clear water is, like, where do you even start when water is this clear and you've got a ton of water? And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say for this time of year is you gotta have deep water access. Um, Bass really like three things in the summertime. They like oxygen. So if you get some flow, some water flow, or maybe even just, you know, a bunch of waves uh, mixing up water, current, obviously. Uh, then you got shade. Shade's gonna provide cooler conditions. And then you have just deeper water. That's gonna hold higher oxygenated water and um, it's gonna be cooler, which kind of go hand in hand. So a little bit of bait on the electronics right here in like 30, 35, stagnant, not moving. It looks terrible. It looks terrible at this point, but I don't know if you guys can see this little color change right here from the boat wakes. That can sometimes be your friend in the summertime. You don't have a lot of wind, you get some boat wake and can help stir some things up. So I'm just gonna start with this Ned rig, work some of these little points, bluffs, and then the dock type areas. So while we're working this little bank here, which I'm not too excited about, but just while we're kind of messing around here, it's the start of the day, I just got the okay to talk about these rods. I know a lot of you have asked about those, you know, one of those black rods that you're using in the videos. And when I was in the office the other day, they said, uh, so I could go ahead and start talking about them. So this is going to be our next series of rods. So you guys are familiar with, uh, with the green series, which are, are, that's our baseline of rods, the green uh, series and the gold series, which is a step up from there on the blanks, but they're really the same uh, types of actions. There's a little bit of differences between uh, the actions just due to the materials, but they're really built on the, the same basic, you know, five, six, seven rods that you can pretty much do 90% of bass fishing with. And I love those. I still use them. I, I use the golds a lot, uh, but I've also been using these black series, obviously testing them out and making sure the, the actions are, are good and everything. But these are more advanced technique specific rods. So for example, this right here is a 7.6 medium light, extra fast. So 
it's a little long for drop shotting it's it's really more technique specific for doing stuff like this you know, throwing a finesse jig throwing a hair jig throwing a net head uh throwing shaky heads on light line where you've got a or, or light lure you know you've you've got to really get that lure out there you got an extra uh so you know six inches or so on top to whip it out there the action is correct and it's also very light so not only are the actions different but these blanks are really light they're very sensitive and um we've stepped up the real uh the guides as well i can't remember which fujis they are but these are but they're top notch uh, you'll notice it when you're reeling your line through the guides how smooth it is so uh, those are just some new series of rods and it's going to be called the black series uh that that we're going to have coming i think in the fall and uh they're legit guys so anyway i was hoping to catch fish while explaining the the new rods that are coming but it's not happened just yet let's keep going got to find the three three things of summer bass shade oxygenated water moving water deep current or shade got this fish on live scope it came up and grabbed the ned suspended 100 percent hard hard fish to catch it's fighting kind of weird what is this you've got to be kidding me sally i am on a drum kick right now drum kick for the ages that thing ate my rattling net and took off like a wild banshee dude oh my gosh i thought you were calm look at that rattling net 100 percent suspended fish out there 30 foot of water just nailed it i mean just like a bass would I dropped it vertically over its head, rattled it, fish came, wa-bam. All right, joke's over, fish. You can come out now. It's okay, I'm not here to harm you. My goodness, man. This place is the abyss of nothing. It's been very, very difficult to see. Uh, I wondering if I what I was seeing if I was seeing bass that were following my swim bait or if those were drum Go on here we got a little we got a little school of shad getting pushed oh yeah eaters oh my gosh wow that was explosive literally as I was saying that like where are the fish there's one of them little devils I've been looking for. Midday schooler. You can see the ball of bait. It's real dark up towards the surface. That guy just torpedoed out, out of the depths for it. It's a largemouth. That's what I'm looking for. Oh my, can you imagine if that guy got me? Goodbye. Wish there were more of you. Some Doppler in there. That's uh that's pure America right there, baby. I can smell the gasoline coming off of that thing. That is about a you know probably a 900 horsepower motor. Just ripping about 40 gallons of gas right there. Three seconds. Come here, little bud. 
largey. Fell for the old wacky worm. I saw that fish on the very end of here on the last go. There was another one with it. Let's see if we can get one more. Not very big. Not very big at all, but I will take anything right now. Looks like a lot of bait or maybe even crappie. Maybe bluegill down there. There's something. It's holding a little bit deeper. I only fish this in like really clear water. This is the baby bass color. This is the four inch. Normally I'll just go ahead and throw the five inch, but these fish are just finicky. And I've got a little band I'm putting on it. I like to do this on a, I'm fishing it around marinas. You have to skip it, docks, marinas. All right, there's a couple of fish sitting up under this little walkway. Just don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them really far up under there. Ooh, just had a bass. Chase it all the way out. Could have been one of those ones I was talking about. Typically on a lake like this, deep clear water, and you got all these cables and marinas. If you, if you find one large mouth, like a little large mouth would be schools of them in the summer i've seen where you reel in one you see like four or five more or you just you see a lot on the electronics you'll see uh you see them school every once in a while they come out get some shad but this is, this is pretty tough I've fished a lot of lakes in Texas, but this is probably the most impressive on houses. Wow. Okay, trying another bluff wall. I kind of just wanted to stare at this house. It's so crazy. But this is about as steep as I have seen. About as steep as a bluff wall as I've seen. I'm sitting at 40 foot. It's not crazy. I've seen steeper bluffs on other lakes, but just looks of it. There's the creek channel runs right by this bank. And I'm trying to get Guats, the state fish. Yeah. Stuck like Chuck. Son of a buck. I got it out. Oh, got him on the bank. Yes, that's the fish I seek. Been searching all over for you, Magoo. That is the state fish of Texas. The Guadalupe bass. They do not get very big. I've caught one that's probably two and three quarters, maybe three pounds, the biggest one I've ever caught. Or maybe that was some sort of hybrid. But that is that is a Guadalupe bass, man. Pretty, pretty fish. State fish of Texas, baby. Got him gone. Let you go. I'll catch those all day. Those rapid fire. Do, 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 do. On finesse gear, makes it fun. It's cool. Cool to catch a state fish. Can't do it everywhere, you know? Don't have them around where I am. They're really in just central Texas, but I've heard there's a lot in this lake. Just found one. There we go. Oh, he came off. Ooh, that one felt juicy. What happened there? He had it 100%. I am packing it in, y'all. Steamy hot day, got the fish 
really the whole afternoon, uh, almost till dark. And just, you know, just never really got on them. I did get to catch the state bass. I had another one on, I don't know what it was. It felt a little bigger than a guad, but bite is tough. Um, fishing deep bluffs, I fish deep marinas. Um, let my weightless bait sink down there sometimes to like 20 feet or so. Pretty much just fish finesse. I had the net, the rattling net, and then uh, oh, I threw top water a little bit, but you know, oh, and a wacky rig. But that was about it, y'all. So I never really got, I never got into the full quad swarm. That's what I really wanted. You know, I literally set up some finesse rods to get into some Guadalupe bass. Um, you know, they just, they're not as big and they still fight hard, but get a good fight on the spinning tackle, light line and all that. But I uh, just never got into it. So uh, I'm actually gonna go out again tomorrow. That's gonna be another video. Um, I'm fishing with one of the crazy Guggen, um, Guggen squad fans that actually bought one of the, this was like a joke on our website. We had like a $10,000 uh, bait and tackle bundle. It was like just an unlordly amount of things in there. And anyway, this person bought one of those and uh, used my promo code LFG. So um, they're from Austin. So I was like, yeah, hey, let's go out fishing. So that'll be on the next video. Hopefully they know where the fish are. I will end with this. I love now that I don't tournament fish really. I just fish tournament team tournaments, not individual tournaments, no high level stuff. I love the mystery of the lake. Like you literally just don't know. You don't know what you're going to catch. You have a pretty decent idea. You have a target species that you're going after. You could catch a 40 pound flathead. You could get into a giant school of stripers, get a giant school of crappie, uh, just oddity things. You know, you can catch six inch, you can catch a giant bass. I love the mystery of it. I really do. Now that I, I don't worry about tournament fishing and just catching like three to five pound bass all the time. It's really a lot of fun. So enjoy the dangle. Thank you guys for tuning in. Every single outdoor video of mine. God bless you. God speed. See you on the next one.